lets you store data that needs to persist between sessions, such as items in a player's inventory or skill points. Pretty self-explanatory. You guys know when you're playing a game, and um, you know you're playing. I don't know. It could be really anything. Like it could be a battlegrounds game. Um, you, you guys know you're playing a battlegrounds game. How it saves uh, your total kills when you leave and come back. You're playing Souls R RNG like an RNG game, and then you join back your auras are there, or you play I don't know um, a tycoon. All your cash is there. Well, for most Tycoon games. Um, then if so, there are some that don't. Or a tower defense game. You know, all your... I don't really know how they work. I don't really know how the tower defense game work. But I'm sure like, are your characters or stuff? I don't really know how that works. But yeah. So, yeah. Those are, you know, used by data stores. So, one, data stores... Like, data can only be saved in... Data can only be saved, like, via data stores and stuff on the server side. Like, you cannot save a player data on a local on a local script you can save it on a server script or a module script but you can't save it on a, a local script now you have you do have to enable data stores it's very it's unlike uh other things in scripting where all you have to do is just, you know just type no you have to go to game settings right you have to go to permissions or sorry, no, permission. i always get this wrong you, just, you have to go to security and then you have to click enable studio access to api services make sure there's a screen click save publish just in case right and stuff because you have to give it permission for the data store to work, right? So the way we set up a data store is we open our script, right? First, we need to create a variable for our data store. So we would say local, and then we put the name of the data store. So let's say local example data store is equal to game get service. Like I said, we need the data store service. Then you would say get data store in quotation marks. You would then put the name of the, da the data store. So let's say example data store. There we go. There's our data store, right? So then we would need to actually set up a function that actually uses the, the data store. So let's set up a function for whenever the player joins the game. We're going to say game.players.playerAdded connect function in parentheses put PLR, which is short for the player who joined the game, then press enter, right? So this function will run whenever a player joins the game as previously mentioned in part one, right? So we are going to need to obviously, you know, create some stats to actually, you know, be saved. So let's say, um, there are some leader stats, like stuff we want to display on the, on the Roblox default leaderboard. Let's create a leader stats folder, right? So first things first, if you want to create stats that appear like, uh, you guys know, like in the top right, stats actually appear in the top right, you have to first create a leader stats folder. And it's actually a very specific way you have to go about it. So first thing first, let's create a variable for it. So local, you're going to name it leader stats. And it's just as like the AI is clearly doing. You would say leader stats equal to instance dot new. Uh, parentheses quotation marks then you would uh, put folder parent this to the player then you would say leader stats that name is equal to in quotation marks leader stats now you need to make sure however you spell the variable doesn't matter but how you spell the actual in-game name this is very important it has to be spelled like this with a lowercase l if you don't it's not going to appear on the top right roblox will only set the leader stats it will only include the values inside of the folder if it's named uh leader stats with a capital i mean with a lowercase l now we need to create an actual stat. So of course, by default, let's just do, you know, cash. So we're going to say local cash. Here's how you create a value. You're going to say is equal to instance.new. Now, as you guys remember, I mentioned the different values. You know, you have bool values, you have number values, you have string values. You also have int values, which I did not mention. Int values are actually, it's pretty much just a string and a number in one. Like you can set them to, like say if for whatever reason you had like a, you had like a value that like you wanted you, you had like a value that you wanted to be able to like sometimes set to a string sometimes set to a number that's what you use an in value for and stuff but you, i can't really imagine most cases like a lot a lot of scenarios where you'd really need a value like that but yeah so cash is obviously going to be a number value right and then we need to make sure we parent it correct do not parent it to the player we need to parent it to leader stats so that we can actually see it in the top right then press enter then we're going to set the name. So cash.name is equal to quotation marks cash, right? Then we also need to set the default value. Now, by default, the value is zero, but I'd like to set it just in case. So cash.value is equal to zero, right? Now we need to make it to that. This is, keep in mind, this is all the default stuff. This is if a player is joining the game and it's like, this is their first time being here. We need to actually make it so that if a player has played the game before, then their data is going to, we're going to achieve their data and then we're going to load their data, right? So 
let's go ahead and create a variable. I mean, a variable, a variable. We're going to first things first create our key. We're going to say local key is equal to player to user ID. So the key, this is pretty much the identifier. This is the identifier associated with each individual player's data. Here's how you know which data belongs to which player and stuff. Now you could use a player's username. Obviously that is a horrible idea as people can change their username. So that's very stupid. Cause if like two people switch usernames, then I don't know if you can like take someone else's old username, but the point is people can change usernames. It's not a reliable way and it's very stupid. Use their user ID as a player cannot switch stuff. So they can't change the user ID. They'd have to you know make a new account and that's on them if that's the case, right? So that's going to be our key. And then I'm going to use a protected call. Now, a protected call, this, I'm only showing you guys this because this is a reliable way of saving that and ensuring it's loaded properly, saved properly and stuff. But really and truly protected calls, you guys should not be using these until you are an intermediate level scripter as it confused the hell out of me when I was figuring it out. So definitely you guys should not be using this stuff, but I'm just gonna introduce it to you guys just so you know how to properly save data and load it as well. You're gonna say local success comma error message, right? is equal to protected p call is short for protected call then you're going to put function in the parentheses then enter right so success this pretty much just means that okay it worked and then the, the first thing is okay here's how you know it worked the second thing is uh okay it didn't work and this is the message along with it right this is the error message so that's pretty much how it works so pretty much anything that could possibly fail you would want to put inside of a protected call now if you don't know data like retrieving a player's data as well as save, especially saving data can actually there are times where it can actually like have errors and stuff like say if too many players like i don't know like if for some odd reason like i don't know three different people or not three let's say like your game just had a shutdown because you just dropped a big update and stuff so you have all these people trying to join the game at the same time i'm pretty sure everybody knows even you know before you suddenly had to develop you you knew that's a you know it's a lot of stress and a big toll on the server so all their play all the players data that's you know all the players that all the players that are trying to join right all of their data is currently being retrieved or at least the server is trying to retrieve all of their data and it's trying to load it so that the player can have it you know it's good to go for when you know they click they click play or just whenever they get the loading screen and whatnot right so if it's a ton of people trying to load their data at once or if you have like a manual save thing where like players can manually save their data then you have to you know be careful with that because trying to pretty much save uh data too many times trying to pretty much call the data service too many times to either retrieve data or save data can result in errors and stuff so we need to use protected call to ensure players data is saved and loaded because if you don't have these measures in place there there are times where players could literally leave the game and their data doesn't save properly or they could join the game and like it's like they join the game and it says they're level zero and whatnot or, or level one when they're really a level 99 so yeah that's why it's important. So first things first, we're going to create another variable. This is going to be our, our data variable. You're going to say local data is equal to example data store. And then you're going to say, which wait, I'm trying to think actually. Um, dang, I'm not going to lie. I actually forgot. Oh yeah, get async. I'm not going to let my brain turn off for a solid second. Anyway, so get async. So as the name implies, this is, you know, you're retrieving the data. So, you know, you're getting it, right? So you're going to put your key as you can clearly see right there. So you're going to throw the key, which is the player's user ID. So then you're going to use an if statement. Remember, conditional statements. You're just simply going to say if data, so enter. So if you, if you didn't actually uh, understand this from when I explained uh, if uh, conditional statements and stuff. So if you just put if and then a variable, and then you just put then, like if you don't put like if so-and-so is equal to whatever if you just put it like this this pretty much just means as long as it ex as long as it one exists and two as long as it's not nil right so like pretty much if this right so if i put if i if, if i said data right if i said local data for example actually yeah let me just use this example which is perfect so if i have data a player player when trying to join they have they have data it's going to say if data okay the player has data we'll proceed now say if i try joining the game for the first time i don't have any data so it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna look for my data it's gonna be like okay there is no data so we're not gonna proceed so that's pretty much how it works then i'm going to say hash dot value is equal to data regular brackets one because pretty much when you're saving multiple values of data into a data store you have to specify 
which which uh i guess you could say slot you want to save it in like when you get when you add more values like you know gems uh ranks um i don't know prestiges whatnot you would want to keep going the whole point is you would put the name of the value the word you know dot value is equal to data and then you would just keep them you would just keep going two three four five six seven and etc that's how you would go right so we set this up we click the arrow right here then press enter right then you're gonna say while not success enter remember we just talked about while loops so pretty much while not success so while it's so while um it's not working and stuff you're going to just copy and paste it you're just going to control c and control v boom and then of course remember we need a wait because remember while loops require a wait un unless you want the server to crash pretty much so yeah because in studio it won't crash um well actually no that actually depends on how well your computer is because i do know that some like not so great computers can actually crash if studio is like like overrun overwhelmed by like a while loop and stuff but like in an actual server no that can actually crash the server and stuff if you um have too many while loops and stuff right so yeah so we would just set a player's data now if the player doesn't have any data nothing would happen they would just have the default stuff and nothing would ever change now i've showed you guys how to set up leader stats and how to create a data store and how to load data now we need to of course it's the most important part saving data right so we have to we have we actually have to set up another function. This is a function for whenever players leave the game. So game that players that player moving connect function in parentheses put plr which is short for the player then enter right. If you actually want to know how to uh, make manual saving, like if you want your game to have manual saving where a player presses like a button to save their data, I do have a video on that and stuff. But this is usually how most games save data. They usually save it when you know a player leaves the game, which is the most reliable and just generally easiest way in my opinion save data so um yeah so we're gonna do this a little differently but we are gonna use another uh protect a call we're gonna you know same thing local success comma error message is equal to p call function in parentheses then you know empty parentheses enter right and then this time you're going to create a data table you're gonna say local data Table. Now I do want to specify the name of this is data table, but like is equal to special brackets. Remember, I covered how to create tables. You use special brackets to create a table. It's called the name of the variable is called data table because we're going because the values that we're going to be inserting into the table is going to be pieces of data. But this is just a regular table. I don't want to confuse people because I feel like if I only refer to it as a data table, people will think I'm like this is a different type of table or something. No, there's just tables. It's a regular table yeah then we're going to um use a for i loop remember cover this again it's actually coincidence that i covered all this stuff prior to me getting to data stores but yeah i'm gonna say for i comma v in pairs right and then this time you're gonna say player dot remember leader stats the leader stats folder remember you have to spell everything exactly as it is dot leader stats remember colon get children right then enter oh sorry enter right so now that we've gotten all the children then as the ai can clearly tell we're going to say table that insert remember this is how we insert values our data table comma v dot value now i do want to clarify something this only works if all of your values are inside of the leader stats folder you do have to account for if some variable i mean if some values are parented to like other things like if there are some values printed to like a player's character, the player themselves and not the leader stats folder, then you would have to, you know, reference that directly by saying like player dot leader stats dot um well sorry, sorry, sorry. You would do the same thing, right? You know, control C, control V, and then you would just do uh you would actually just get the value differently. You would just say player dot leader stats. You guys don't have to do this, but dot cache dot value. That's just how that's another way you could do it, right? And that's actually how I used to do it before. So yeah, that's how you do it. So here's how uh, we would set up uh, data saving. Then the last thing we have to do is actually officially save the data. We've now we've now uh, we've gotten all the data and we've put it inside of a data table. Now we just need to save it. We would say we would then say example data store set async. You would throw your key in there. Oh man, I forgot to actually create that. Let's go ahead and create the variable real quick. Local key, you guys remember player user ID. Same thing as in the first function you're going to throw your key in there then comma you're going to throw your data table now there is actually another way you can do it like this you can actually just create a table inside here and then just uh put the values in individually but i used i used to, I used to do it like that a long time ago but it's too much because then you pretty much have like a long like you just have like a very long line of just like values stretching across the screen and then you'd have to like scroll through it like it's just it's very 
it's kind of messy honestly like it's just a mess really but yeah then we're gonna go after it we're gonna do the same thing while not success enter you guys remember copy and paste control c control v go after it all while loops need a wait so test out wait three seconds you guys can uh, decide how much time you want and boom just like that you have officially set up your first data store we can go ahead and test to make sure this works i'll show you guys how we can test this so if i go ahead and click play you guys should see um you guys are going to see leader stat pop up in the top right you should say cash with zero right so of course to make sure it saves we need to actually you know set our cash value now i just want to clarify remember Data saving only occurs on the server side. So obviously, since we're on the client side, we can't go to players and change the value. You can notice the client side. We have to click that, make sure we're on the server side, then change the value. So open up, you guys, you have the leader sets folder, which is parented to the player. Then we're going to adjust the number value, which is cash. And then I'm going to set the value equal to, let's say 20, right? Now I do want to explain something, right? A, a basic concept so you guys know how in an actual if you've ever actually um been like an admin for a game or something or been a developer or whatnot in an actual roblox server when the last player leaves the game the server does not instantly shut down i feel like a lot of people know that but just in case you didn't know that server like if you're the last person in the game and you leave the server does not instantly shut down the server actually shuts down about a few minutes after the server has been empty the reason for that is is literally because of data saving it's to give the server enough time to make sure that like it's done all of its cleanup duties it needs to you know done which Pretty much the only real cleanup duty it would have to do that would require the server to stay open is just to save all the player's data. But yeah. So in Studio, things are a little different since, since it's not an actual server. When you press stop, it stops. Like there is no delay, there is no few seconds, or there is no few seconds. It doesn't stay open for minutes and stuff. No. Like it stops after like three seconds if you playing of you clicking the button. So the way we uh, make up for it not having a delay is we have to create our own delay by pretty much you're going to uh click you know click server you're going to delete your player's instance from the player side from the player's service now that you guys see how it said disconnect from that's the same message that appears when you press stop that by deleting your player's instance from the uh, player service that is essentially the same thing as leaving the game but you're leaving the server open that's the, it's the same thing it's the same thing as pretty much you're just leaving the game but the server is still uh, up and running so after a few seconds you, you go ahead and press stop right then we click play again it should in the top right say data uh, I mean, sorry, cash 20. Now, if it doesn't, don't panic, don't panic. Try it again. If it doesn't work again, what I'd recommend doing is publishing it and testing it in an actual server. Testing data stores in studio is a little bit, it's a little weird. It's better to test it in like actual servers and stuff. But yeah, so that's data stores and stuff. 